A question I've been getting asked recently, and I typically get it all the time, honestly, is where in Reno should I live and what can I afford? And for those of you that know me, I've been a real estate agent here for over 20 years. I am very well versed in all things Reno and Northern Nevada. And after living here now going on my 35th year, we have all kinds of information for you today. And we've done all kinds of other videos on why living in Reno and is it right for you to live here and how to say the word Nevada properly. It is said Nevada, only say Nevada, na va Duh, like D-U-H at the end. And the pros and cons and the cost of living and all the videos, you can go through our, our channel and see all this other video content about our area. But what we haven't talked about too much is the specific neighborhoods and areas that people can live in based upon price, location, those kind of things. And today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about just the Reno area. For most of you that are new here, if I were to drive you around, there is a second city called Sparks that they all run together. It's one county, it's one school district. And a lot of people don't realize you've actually gone from Reno to Sparks spark sometimes. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about exclusively Reno and the neighborhoods there, but I'm going to give you a quick little overview of where Reno is versus where Sparks is. And in reality, the location and population is really about 70, 75% Reno, 25, 35% Sparks. But if you're new here and you look, we have the, what's called the McCarran Loop. It runs in a full circle around Reno and Sparks. And typically everything on the inside of that loop, those homes, those neighborhoods are typically the OG areas. They're older homes. There's parts in the Southwest that we're going to talk about that are where people look for 7,500 year old properties. But if you're trying to figure out where you are, the university is on the north end of this loop and it is just on the inside of the McCarran Loop. And the airport is on the southeast section of the McCarran Loop. So for most people, because our airport and our university are centrally located, none of the areas that we're going to talk about are overly far away from either of these places. So sometimes when people move here and they travel a lot for work, they want to make sure that they are not too far from the airport. Or if you're trying to buy an investment property for kids that might be going to UNR, there are certain areas that make more sense. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you look at that map, you have a couple of things. McCarran runs in a loop. We only have the two freeways. So you have 80 that runs east and west. So if you're coming from the Bay Area, you're taking 80 east. It runs almost directly through the middle of Reno and Sparks. And then you have our second freeway, which is 395. It also is known as 580 that runs north and south. It now runs north all the way to the California border and goes out to some cities in California. And if you go south, it'll now take you all the way to the far end of Carson City. It used to be that you had to take a street called South Virginia. Virginia, which runs right through the university, right through downtown, right through Reno. And you would literally take that all the way through Washoe Valley and all the way directly through Carson City. So now our areas got a little closer together in the fact that the freeway makes it a lot easier to travel all around those areas. And Reno, for the most part, is typically on the west side of South Virginia, and it runs all up and down that area. But the locations we're going to talk about first, if we start all the way in the south, and we're going to start in that southeast corner before we loop all the way around the west and up to the north side, are what's called Donner Springs and Hidden Valley. So let's talk about Donner Springs first. Donner Springs, for the most part, is it loops on both sides of McCarran. McCarran runs right through it. So on the inside, there are some homes that are all built kind of in the 70s and 80s. You can find a lot of stuff that's in that $400,000 up to $500,000 range. You got to be careful what you're looking at there because of the age of the properties. The prices will be all over the board for similar square footages and bedrooms and bathrooms. It just depends on have they been updated and modernized or not. You can also find condos in Donner Springs. I've got a lot of people live in these Donner Springs condos. You can literally find them in the two and three hundred thousand dollar price range and they're nice actually they do not have garages but they are good safe condos for someone that would want to live there hidden valley runs just above where donner springs in and hidden valley actually now has become a little more popular in the fact that what's called the southeast connector there's a road that now runs you to 80 so that you can go out to sparks or out to usa parkway but that area is aptly named there's hidden valley country club out there and the majority of the homes in that area are built in the 70s and they're older but you do on each end of hidden valley now have some newer construction homes that people can afford and do. And typically most everything in there is going to run roughly around $300 a square foot. Daughter Springs will be slightly lower than $300 a square foot. But you can find lots of cool properties in these areas. They're just not overly big and there's not a lot of turnover in these neighborhoods. So if you're looking in those areas, you got to be prepared when something does come available. The next area that we want to talk about is what's called South Meadows. It is just south of where we just talked about and it is still on the east side of South Virginia Street and it runs all the way south to what's called Mount Rose Highway. In that area, there are three major neighborhoods sections, you have Double Diamond, Damati Ranch, and Curdy Ranch. And Curdy Ranch would be the furthest south. You do have to be a little bit careful if you're zoned in Curdy Ranch because the schools are zoned a little bit differently. And some kids that live right there go to a different high school than the rest of South Meadows. But if you're in those areas, you can find condos and you can find lower price condos all the way up to higher price condos. There's four major condo 
complexes in there, Triana, Tanamera, Esplanade, Florida Lee. Like one of those complexes used to be apartments that was converted. Florida Lee was the high-end condo complex that has really cool pools and amenities. So you can find stuff, most of them are gonna be between four hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars and $800,000. If you go to the single family homes, and typically if you're in the north end, which is Double Diamond, as it runs toward Damani Ranch and towards Curdy Ranch, the homes will get newer as you travel further south. When I had bought my first home in Double Diamond in the mid late 90s, I literally was able to buy a home for hundred bucks a square foot, but there probably weren't 200 homes in Double Diamond. And the majority of the amenities that we're gonna talk about in another video in another day weren't even there. And the freeway at that time didn't even run that far. So you just have to realize now, nothing's gonna be older than the mid 90s, but they're starting to push 30 years old. So when you're buying homes in these areas, you have to just be cautious about how they've been updated and maintained and those kind of things. For the most part, I jokingly say that whole area kind of looks like a Vegas style neighborhood. So it has a lot of stucco, tile roof, and you can find homes anywhere from 12, 1300 square feet all the way up to 3,500 or more. Majority of the stuff happens between five fifty and $800,000. But even now you can find homes over $800,000 that Toll Brothers built some really nice homes up on the hill. And there's quite a few 55 and over communities in that area where the homes are nicely upgraded. So you're gonna see stuff that'll be at a higher price per square foot. I would say typically the bigger the home gets, the lower the price per square foot goes. But in this particular area, the homes over $800,000 seem to sell for a higher price per square foot than the more standard family style homes that you see all over the South Meadows. The next neighborhood we're gonna talk about is now we're gonna go on the west side. We're gonna jump across South Virginia Street up Mount Rose Highway. And in these areas, when you go up maybe 10 minutes, which there used to be no traffic lights, now there's a handful of traffic lights. We're gonna go to a neighborhood called Galena Forest. Galena Forest happens to be just above Montro. Montro has a golf course. It is a huge gated community, high end. It's one of the, probably the most expensive areas in Reno. And the difference between there and the neighborhood just above it in Galena Forest is Galena Forest is on acreage. It is in the trees and all those homes were custom built where in Montro they're custom built as well. But a lot of them look much more stucco, tie roof. Just some of them are just gigantic in there. And as you start to work your way back down towards Mount Rose Highway, you have Callahan Ranch on the left. And as you get further down by Galena High School, as you're working your way back down towards South Virginia Street, those are neighborhoods where you literally could spend upwards of three, four, five million dollars. So when people are looking for a higher end properties, these are some of the areas that we go to. As we jump just to the north of Mount Rose Highway, you'll have areas like Arrow Creek, Saddlehorn, the old creek. Arrow Creek is sort of similar to Montreux. The houses aren't as nice. It's not as high end, but it does have two golf courses versus one. And when it's fully completely built out, you can still buy land in there and build a house. There'll be roughly 1,200 homes in there. I don't know exactly how many homes are in Montreux. And just below there, you have Saddlehorn and Field Creek that when I first moved here in the late 80s, early 90s, it was all lots and they're all custom built homes. So everything in there is a little bit unique. These homes are pushing 25, 30 years old as well. The price per square foot will be all over the place. To find homes less than a million dollars. There just aren't a lot of them unless you're near Galena High School or just off Wedge Parkway. And just off Wedge Parkway is the one condo complex that you can find. So if you want to live south, you can spend four or $500,000 in a complex called Fallen Leaf. It is just behind that Rayleigh Shopping Center right there on Mount Rose Highway. So you can get over there for those prices, but there's just not a lot that far south if you want to spend less than a million dollars. You have to start to come a little bit more north, which we're going to talk about next. So as you start to come a little further north from Arrow Creek, Saddlehorn, Field Creek, you're going to get a pocket of home in there that's a little bit older and they were the original way south homes so in those neighborhoods you can find a lot of homes in the six seven eight hundred thousand dollar range but you got to be careful what kind of condition they're in because many of them have been there quite a long time so as you're continuing to come a little bit north you're still on the far west side of south virginia street and you start to run into places like ranch hera Collin Ranch as you're leading your way back towards the Northwest. And as you hop onto the inside of McCarran in an area called 160, which is Old Southwest, that is that one section where you might be able to find homes that are 70, 80, 100 years old. I personally am always shocked by how high a price per square foot the homes in those areas are looking for. But if you come from somewhere else and you really love those older, older homes, it is one of the only pockets of areas that we really have homes that are that old, that have that charm, that have those things that sometimes people are looking for that you can't find in a home that was built in the 70s or 80s or even newer. But Collin Ranch, again is a lot of old school Reno people. You're starting getting close to Reno High School. There's some condos as you get closer towards, again, South Virginia Street. But it's like I said, it's always that loop outside versus inside where the prices start to change. But Collar Ranch is really nice. And as you're starting to go this direction, a lot of people that have to either commute back to California, you can save yourself a lot of time because from the South Meadows versus this area and the area we're going to talk about next, you're saving yourself 30 minutes. So if you're a regular to Sacramento or a regular to the Bay Area, it'll save you a lot of time as far as areas and locations go. But in these areas, you can find homes upwards of a million dollars plus. There's a couple little pockets in there with really expensive homes. But again, typically in that three to $400 a square foot range, and on occasion you're gonna get the really high end stuff that you might actually
actually be 500 a square foot and even over. Another area that sometimes I think people forget about is our downtown and midtown areas. It used to be when you were in downtown Reno, it was just casinos and nobody lived down in downtown. But now, of I'm trying to think how many years ago it was, there were a handful of the hotels that got converted into condo complexes. So we have high-rise condos. They're probably the highest HOA fees that we have in town. But if you're looking for downtown living because you're used to that, you came from San Francisco or somewhere that you want to have more of that, there are some really cool options for you downtown. And it leads as you come further south, right into Midtown, which over the last five years has been the most redone, revitalized area of town where there's all kinds of cool restaurants and stores and shops. And they've actually made the road much more walkable. It used to be two lanes each way, and now it's only one. One. Even those high-rise condo buildings, those are older buildings, but there's all kinds of cool pools and amenities. And as you work your way, you're walking distance right into the Midtown area, which again, to me, these are the most walkable areas if you're looking for things like restaurants and stuff like that. There are other neighborhoods that are walkable, like Collin Ranch and the South Meadows, where there's walking trails and places you can access to go on a hike or things like that, but it's not going to lead you directly to actual restaurants and things along those lines. That Midtown area is, again, is one of the more up-and-coming areas, so you're seeing more and more people live in those areas, which is kind of a cool thing. Instead of also always spreading out into all these other neighborhoods, that downtown and midtown area are really awesome. So as you continue to go north, we're now going to jump just across 80 into what is referred to as Northwest Reno. And in that area, again, as you're looping on McCarran, if you jump onto the inside into an old Northwest Reno, you're starting to get close to the university now. So in those areas, there's all kinds of condos, older homes now that might be more 50s, 60s, 70s. And typically in those areas, you're going to get people that are old school, that have lived there a long time, or you start getting people that are buying rental properties properties for students to live in because your access to UNR from there is really starting to get pretty close because you're just inside McCarran and just west of the university. As you go further west, you get into a newer northwest area, which when I first moved here in the early 90s, that was the brand new area. It was kind of like South Meadows was 10 years later, but those homes now are all getting 30, 35 years old. On a price per square foot level, you're always in the 300s. You can find homes still in the four and five hundreds going up from there. But as you continue to move further out, you're going to jump near McQueen High School. And when McQueen was first built, there were no houses anywhere near. It. Once you jump past McQueen High School, you have a new neighbor called Somerset. Somerset Homes, I think the oldest now might be pushing towards 20 years old. There is a golf course in there. There are not a ton of amenities in there, and there are home prices from condos in the 500s all the way up to custom home builds that are much, much newer. They're heavy on the HOA fees in there, so it's not really a place I would tell investors to buy property, but it is definitely an area where people are looking for high-end homes that want to have easy access to California. It's perfect because you're just then before Verdi and Mogul, and those are all a little more rural type. So from there, we hit a neighborhood called the North Valleys. And as you're going out towards the North Valleys, you have Sun Valley, Golden Valley, Lemon Valley. You also have Stead and Cold Springs. And I used to live out in Stead. It was my very first house I bought out there in like 1992 or three. But these are areas that typically people go to because it's more cost effective. You as a buyer can buy a rental property, get good investments out there. But typically people are going that way because they can only afford three, four, five hundred thousand. We've even sold a couple of homes out there this year under three hundred thousand. And you will get pockets of some stuff that was out there when that was considered way out that direction. But Cold Springs and Stead have had a lot of new construction over the last 20 years, so you can get an inexpensive, relatively new house in those areas. But if you go out more Lemon Valley, Golden Valley, then you can find homes on half acre, acre lots. It's a little more rural. You're on sometimes dirt roads, and you can find all different kinds of property if you're looking for a little more elbow room and space. For those that might be looking for 10 plus acres or horse property or that really truly want to live on a dirt road, Red Rock Road, if you look at this map, it literally goes almost 25 miles, and on the back end of it, you're almost in California at that point. Actually, when you pop out of Red Rock Road, you actually are in California, but all those homes are all considered Reno addresses. And over the years, we sold lots of houses out there, whether it's dirt you want to build from scratch, or if you're looking for horse property, and of course, you got to pay attention to whether it already has horse facilities on it or not. So those, you can be way out there and you're still only maybe 35 to 45 minutes back to the airport. You're only 20 minutes back to the main road and shopping. So you get to live where you feel like you're way isolated, but at the same time, there's still lots of good things accessible to you as far as that goes. If you're thinking about moving to the Northern Nevada Reno area, you can see there's lots of variety. There's lots of different options for you. So if you want specific information for yourself, make a comment, reach out to us. We'll get you details on whatever is you're looking for. And if you're enjoying the type of content we're talking about and trying to learn more about Reno and the surrounding areas, we're going to do videos and go in much more depth specifically about these neighborhoods. You can see there are a lot of them. As we start doing those, your neighborhood that you're looking for will start to pop up. If you have specific questions about an area that you really want to know about right away, just reach out to me. We'll get you that information. So thanks for watching the video. There'll be more content like this coming soon and we'll see you on the next video.